David Sanders. He has now set his recruitment date. That will be in mid-August. August the 17th, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. I thought it was going to come a lot closer. And I'll be honest with you, the way that struck me when I heard mid-August, I thought to myself, eh, Tennessee was in good shape. They'd rather him go ahead and announce the decision because I think if they did so, it would be in Tennessee. At, it would be Tennessee after his recent interaction with the balls. So let's talk a little bit about David Sanders, how big he would be. And I want to get to that. But first, the fact that he's not going to announce his decision for over a month. Does that worry you if you're if you're Tennessee at all? It worries me. Um more than it would have a couple of weeks ago because the question was, what was he waiting on? And I think the biggest reason it worries me is I thought it was down to Tennessee and Clemson. Now, reportedly, Georgia is in the mix, and Georgia just flipped a recruit. I don't know if you guys saw that over the weekend. Um, they flipped a recruit from South Carolina, I believe it is. So Georgia is starting to pick up some recruiting momentum more than they usually do. So This is the type of guy that – Tennessee fans got so used to having their heart broken for about a decade. Yes. And it was the guy that you're in on, you've identified early, you have a great relationship, and then Alabama or Georgia, be it NIO money or not, come swoops in and says, ah, we'll take them. And that's what Tennessee wants to get past. I think they're close, but they're still going to have one or two of those guys a year for the foreseeable future unless they just built an absolute dynasty. Yes, exactly. And honestly, Dave, even if you build a dynasty, when you're in the recruiting show, you're going to win and lose recruiting battles just at a larger, uh, on a larger level, basically. Sure. And, and so one of the Georgia's making a run guys in the, in the, um, I call it the ACC, you know, I don't, it's not the DMV, but the ACC region, North Carolina, <laughs> Virginia area. And, I mean, because they, the quarterback they just flipped was out of Virginia. And I'm starting to think that there is um, an interest in Georgia. Now, the other one that I, I forgot is that um, Nebraska – so Clemson's out, by the way. His finalists are Ohio State, Georgia, Nebraska, and Tennessee. Ohio State's also making a run. This is where I'm shocked. I thought it was always Tennessee and Clemson. Clemson being out of it and Georgia and Ohio State being added, yeah, that's going to raise your red flag if you're Tennessee. And then See, him but, delaying his commitment to August 17th. Yeah, but based off what you just said, and please take a second, hit that like and subscribe button. We would greatly appreciate that. Again, that like button now. And we want to hear your thoughts. Are you most worried about Ohio State or Clemson? But reading between the tea leaves... I'd be more upset about Ohio State based off what you said. You said you thought Clemson was in pretty good shape. Now Ohio State seems to be in pretty good shape. They've got money. They're in full desperation mode. That's pretty obvious when you go out and hire Chip Kelly to be your offensive coordinator. So I kind of see this a little bit differently than you. I, I see Ohio State making a big push, maybe even a big NIL push here to try to muddy the waters, which it appears uh, as as – as if they're doing it at the very least. I mean, that's your first step. If you're out of the running, two other schools are ahead of you. Your job is to muddy the waters first, and then you try to separate yourself. But right now they've done a good job at muddying the waters. If it is Ohio state doing so. Yes, they have muddied the waters and you actually, your point, I, I'm going to bolster your point for a minute. Ohio state was the last school he visited. He, mm -hmm. he visited right at the end of June and then July comes, and it comes out that he's delaying his commitment until August, which suggests that Ohio State is um, – you're right, Cobbling. I, I said this from the start. Ohio State's all in on this year. They are – their their boosters are basically saying, you better win us a national title or you're fired, Ryan Day. They are, well, not, they are not happy about losing to Michigan three years in a row. Well, and I don't mean for this to sound like I'm being a smart A, okay? But, duh. I mean, when you hire Chip Kelly as the Ohio State offensive coordinator, and this is, at one point, he was thought of as one of the greatest offensive minds in the game. Now the game is caught up to him. There's no question about that. But 
the fact that Ohio State would go after him and pay him that type of money to have an offensive coach when they've already got an offensive coach as their head coach is bizarre to me. Yes, all in, all, all in, more than all in. Chip, Chip, if they don't, if they don't make the college football playoff this year, they're going to have a different coach at Ohio State next year. I will go ahead and go out on a limb and say that right now. I mean, I think they're already gunning for a different coach anyway. I think, I think, I, I something tells me that Ryan Day could win the national title and they would still go with Chip Kelly afterwards, which um, would be crazy. But Dave, I've always wondered, and you can give me your thoughts on this. I said this with Fulmer. Don't you think sometimes schools that have success are too quickly to embrace who they had success with and not realize that they had success in spite of that person? Sometimes I, I would, I mean, my, in the NFL, for instance, the Ravens gave Joe Flacco a $100 million contract because he wanted the Super Bowl. Well, it would have been ballsy. would have been had they said, okay, you want to sell Super Bowl? Now you're a free agent. Test the market. We don't need you. <laughs> I mean. Could you see Josh Heupel doing anything like Ohio State did? Like and getting Chip Kelly as an offensive I, coordinator? Yeah, and I don't know that it was Ryan Day's decision, but it could wasn't. you see him be – I don't think it was either. But you could you see him accepting that? If, if no. the administration came and said, you've got to have this dude, you've got to hire this dude. No, I couldn't see Josh Heupel accepting that. He is, I think Josh Heupel, he, Josh Heupel has, it. this is again, this is where a spurrier similarity is there. Josh Heupel kind of treats coaching college football like playing Madden, doesn't he? He enjoys calling plays. And that, that, that's what, that's where the fun comes for him. That's why you notice Jimbo Fisher when play calling duties were taken away from him, didn't it seem like last year Jimbo Fisher just did not care if he was going to get fired or not? He's like, I'll sit on the money if you do this. I don't care. Yeah, he's kind of in that uh, Ed Orgeron school of thinking. Uh, let's just go ahead and enjoy it. This is what's going to happen. Might as well, <laughs> might as well just go ahead and happen. We'll just take it. Have y'all seen? Yeah. Have Have y'all seen the Ed Orgeron interview where he says? Uh, he He says uh, he interviews him being um, fired by LSU, and uh, the guy said. Uh, coach, you got 17 million left on your belt. We're gonna give it to you. And Edward Ron's exact quote was, Well, what time you want me to leave, or what door you want me out of? <laughs> well, and he actually hinted, if you remember, before the last game they played, that he was gone too. That may be the same interview you're talking about. Hemp House, the premier hemp dispensary online with a wide variety, great selection, and strict standards to ensure you only receive the best in CBD or Delta products. And you need to know that you're receiving the best. There's a lot out there. Go to HempHouseChatWith2Ts.com. HempHouseChatWith2Ts.com. Use the promo code HOOKED to get 10% off. The promo code HOOKED to get 10% off. And when I look at uh, the, the guys that can have a major impact for Tennessee, I tend to think more along the lines of, the skill position players. He's not a true freshman, but he's an un, he's an underclassman. The guy, if I could kind of wedge into your list, it doesn't fit the parameters, would probably be Ricky Gibson as far as an underclassman. Not a true freshman, obviously. Yes, and I'm going to be going through the week debating the five best players at every of every class. So we'll do redshirt freshmen tomorrow, then we're going to do sophomores, juniors, and seniors. So we'll be doing this, guys, for a while. But, yeah, yeah. Um, I get. I, I'm. I'm. I'm a big believer in Ricky Gibson too. Um, with David Sanders, Dave, the one thing I would say could work for Tennessee if Ohio State's making a run. This turmoil you could really sell to David Sanders, right? If he's actually thinking about his NFL future and not trying to trip over nickels or tr not trip over dollars. I'm sorry, not trip over nickels in search of dollars. You go to Tennessee, right? With Glenn Ellaby as the coach, yes, I think you could make a strong argument for that. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And so but you could I, also I make that you could make the strong argument to go to a lot of schools. Let's talk about the schools that are in his that are actually you know in his final grouping, which would be Clemson, Ohio State, and Tennessee, right? No, no, Clemson's out. It's Nebraska, Ohio State, and Tennessee, and Georgia. Well, he's not going to Nebraska. I mean, Nebraska is I don't know I what the, no, I don't know what Nebraska did if they found out they had a second cousin related to him, but he's not going to Nebraska. He's probably going to I Georgia. Mean, yeah, if you talk corn country, I would have more faith in Iowa than Nebraska, right? Because if you're an offensive lineman, you might go to Iowa if you're a five star. They'll turn you into the NFL. Um, Iowa turns out NFL. Iowa and Wisconsin are the two best offensive line schools, better more than any SEC school. Look at the numbers with the NFL.